Hello everybody, it's 8 o'clock and welcome to this Spread Betting for Beginners webinar. I am going to take questions at the end of the webinar, but uh, you can post them by writing them on the screen in front of you. Thank you very much to the person who said great on BBC News earlier. Would you believe I had about four broadcasts today on the Beeb somehow and uh, I've been awake for 12 hours. But this is the highlight of my day, not all the BBC broadcasts. And the reason is I'm really excited about doing a beginner's course, as it were, a webinar on spread betting. And the reason is I haven't done a beginner's one for a while. And there's so much information, so many new things which are out there that I want to draw to your attention. And I should say, although I say beginners, some of it will absolutely be known to some of you. But what I like to do with beginners, because I know people can catch on very quickly with what we're talking about, is actually talk about one or two advanced things so you get added value, whether you are technically a beginner or not. So let's kick off straight away with the webinar. First of all, I've got to, as I always do with these things, give very important notices, one of which is nothing in here constitutes financial advice for the simple reason that I'm not speaking to any particular individual in the audience. I don't know anybody's personal financial circumstances and therefore I cannot give individual financial advice through a webinar and in any event uh, that's not the purpose of these webinars. It is more journalistic educational content that I am of course providing. The second thing is we're going to obviously be talking about spread trading. Spread trading is a margin product. This means that you could lose more money than you've initially deposited and it is a relatively risky product compared to owning, say, shares. Although I do know somebody from the FSA who disagrees with that. He believes, well, of course, if you buy the wrong share, it's more risky than buying a spread bet on, say, a Barclays stock uh, compared to buying the actual underlying share of a name-listed mining company out of the middle of nowhere and mining rare earths. So, but I am obliged to tell you that it is a margin product and therefore can be potentially relatively risky and you can lose more money than you started with. So please do take care. The other aspects is to the extent that we might talk also about other products such as foreign exchange. They too carry relatively high levels of risk and I will try and point out risk associated with these even during the presentation whenever I can because of course this is not just about making money. The first and foremost thing is it's about making sure you don't lose money. Only then can we start talking about making money that comes after it thereafter. So what should I start with when we're talking about spread betting? That's what I was thinking when I was doing this. So as I say, I've just given the notice on the, the warnings as it were almost on these things and what happens. That everyone does appreciate the risks and I will highlight of course the risks as I go through this webinar and make sure that we understand and appreciate those things as well. But as I say, now what I want to talk about is the actual aspects of trading. Uh, so I'm going to write that out as well. And uh, I should say all my webinars will be available on alpishpatel.com for free as well. You're going to be able to see them. The reason I like to give them live is because I can answer the questions. You get to see some of these questions. And also the recorded ones can be a little bit edited down in some parts just for the sake of time and so on. I run a fund management company where FSA regulated. This is probably a simple screen to let you know what I do, what my friends think I do, uh, and what everybody else seems to think I do. That's probably the quickest way to tell you. I used to write a weekly column for the Financial Times. I've written 13 books on investing, including two this year, which will be published later in the year, and uh, do lots of broadcasting and analysis and so on and so forth. Ever since I left the bar about 15 years ago, I've been trading on my own account and then set up the asset management company. So that's a bit of background about me. Now, what is it we're trying to do? Even though we're talking about spread betting, what essentially is it that we're trying to do? Well, put it in simple and obvious terms, this is it. We're just trying to buy low, sell high. We're trying to buy at 100 pence and sell at 110 pence. That's all it is, and that's all it is, even though technically, as I say, it's called a spread bet. Now. Some of it, as I say, is going to be a basic reminder, but some of it is going to be quite advanced, and I'm going to give you data of actual 
traders on what strategies they've used, what works, what doesn't, the lessons we've learnt both in our own trading and experiences, what we've learnt from some of the world's leading traders and what we've learnt from actual spread traders. Before I do that, I want to give you some basic things to remember before we go any further. I'll specify these in far more detail as we go on. It's quite clear we've got to avoid chasing losses. Private investors, beginners, always end up either buying more of a losing trade in the hope they'll get it back, or even when they've exited, try and go back into the same trade saying, oh, I lost my money in this, I want to try and make it back in this. It makes no sense at all. You've got to look for the best opportunities. And that's what our strategy section this evening will be about. Only spread bet with funds you can afford to lose. I assure you the number of traders we have seen spread betting accounts where they lose a lot very quickly. And I'm going to have to discuss with you this evening with strategies how we avoid losing funds. How do we avoid actually losing money? That is going to be critical because very often in spread betting, beginners lose more than they can afford to lose. Use stop-loss orders to help protect the downside risk. I'll show you how and what these stop-loss orders are and how to use them and why what we found was those using stop-losses perform better. Why was it they perform better? Monitor the amount of money you use for spread betting. This, again, might seem silly. Let me explain. We will give you a formula on exactly what the successful traders do in terms of how much money they use for spread betting. And should you need to take a break from spread betting because you've had a bad run, please deactivate your account until you feel fully confident to speculate. I assure you spread betting becomes addictive to some people. That is not a good thing, not a good thing at all. And we've seen the bad side of this. This is why I want to give these free webinars because it's all very well people saying, oh, you can make hundreds per hour and all the rest of it. Those things may well be true as long as we are aware of how to do it in a professional, systematic fashion and that's what I want to get across and that's what excites me because it is possible to learn this skill to learn new skills uh, in trading and improve your trading many fold by just knowing one or two things from the mistakes that others make and others have made uh, and wouldn't it be a heck of a lot cheaper to learn from the mistakes of others than uh, create fresh new ones of your own so just a quick reminder why do people spread bet anyway? Why do they do this? Why is it taken off? A lot of this you will have seen. And let me explain. Don't worry about reading all of that that's on the screen. I'm going to explain it to you. First of all, it's tax-free for UK residents. All the profits are tax-free. Well, heck, um, don't say that out too loud. Otherwise, they'll be after us in the news. Uh, you only need a small deposit. Now, that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. What it means is you don't need £100,000 with which to start trading. You can start with a thousand pounds for instance or five thousand uh, pounds in other words a actually small amount of money uh, and the reason that you can start with a small amount of money a it's a margin product as I said that's not necessarily a good thing because it's leverage that you're using uh, but what that means is that if you've got a thousand pounds essentially the broker is lending you an extra four thousand with which to trade that's essentially what it is and it means you can start trading with relatively small sums of money the the third reason it's really taken off, and it's one of the bits which excites me the most, is because out of one trading platform, and you can see it there on the left, I've done a screen capture, you can access thousands of markets, foreign exchange equities, and commodities. Now, this is interesting because it opens up the range of opportunities that we have, all from one platform. It's a lot easier than having 15 different accounts. The other reason in terms of flexible trading hours is those who've got a day job can still trade actively. For instance, the US markets are still open. You come home from work, you sit in front of a webinar or whatever, and you can start trading as well uh, actively outside of UK market hours. And finally, there are no commissions. There is a spread between the bid and the offer, the buy and the sell price, and the bid and the offer, or the bid and the ask, you can treat just like when you buy currency at the airport. It's the difference between what you buy and what you sell. That's the only inherent cost there is. And you can see some bid and asks here where you see Barclays rolling, the bid and ask, and it's relatively small there as well in terms of that. So what I want to do, as I say with this, is, uh, and somebody's just posted, and thank you for this, that they're short the Dow and it's doing nicely, exactly right. You can uh, trade the US markets and you can see what's happening. And I will be giving webinars on my monthly outlook as well, free webinars 
on, on that. But today I'm not going to talk about specific positions, uh, although I think I've made it clear in past ones that I think this market being overbought uh, is somewhat ready for a fall. And I will explain where, again, for free you can get what my views are and the research I found from places like Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank. I'll do that in the uh, remainder of the webinar where you can get all that information for free as well. So there we are in terms of the key reasons, just a reminder. What can you spread bet? Well, as I've mentioned, and you can see on the screen there, the most popular instruments, and I was with a leading firm just today and their chief executive, and we went through just to look at what some of the most popular instruments are that people spread bet, and particularly what winners tend to spread bet. They tend to be the most liquid market, so we're talking about the FTSE index, the US indices, so the Dow, then you're looking at currencies, uh, largely uh, sterling, so sterling euro in particular, sterling dollar in particular, and then, of course, to a lesser extent, but more uh, for not trading intraday, so not trading in and out during the day, but longer term holdings would be individual stocks, whether it's a UK or non-UK, and of course gold is very popular, uh, as is oil, though slightly less so at the moment, uh, in that they've come off the boil as it were. Uh, now, I won't go into all the technicalities of what a rolling bet, what's the difference between daily rolling and uh, and other periods of time, except to say this, when you look at a screen like this, with any spread betting broker, you'll see a bid price and an ask price, a bid and an offer. You're obviously, this is basic, you're buying at the buy price and you're selling at the sell price. And you've got to buy high and sell even higher, or you've got to buy low and sell higher. Whatever happens, profits are made from making sure you sell at a higher price than you buy. Obvious, we all know this. The important point with spread betting is, as well as going long, that's buying something first and then selling it at a higher price, which we're all used to. You buy it at one price and sell it at a higher price, you can go short just as easily. And by going short, and that's another advantage of spread betting. As I say, I'm going to get more advanced than this in a moment for those who are already familiar with this, uh, but I just want to lay the groundwork for some people. But by going short, what you're doing is you're selling first at hopefully a high price, and you're buying back cheaper later. Same principle as buying first and selling later. You're basically doing the same thing. You're buying at one, selling at the other price. The difference between the two is the profit you make. The advantage with spread betting is you will put a figure in of how much you want to make or lose. You don't want to lose, but how much you might want to make per point that the particular position, whether it's the FTSE 100 or gold or silver moves. So in this case, we're saying I want to make one pound for every point that the UK FTSE 100 daily rolling moves. So if that goes up 10 points, I will make 10 pounds. If I bet 10 pounds a point and that goes up 10 points, I make 100 pounds. Similarly, that's how much I lose as well if it goes in exactly the opposite direction. Buy, sell, very simple. You click on those buttons and you know exactly how much you're making or losing based on the stake you put here. Now, what we're going to have to do in a webinar like this is work out, well, wait a minute, what are the strategies that winning traders use so that when using a screen like this, they're making money? How do they know when to buy, when to sell? How do they know how much money to put in here? That's it. This screen is, is in a way, an image of what we need to know. How do I know when to buy, when to sell? How do I know how much money I should risk? That's all it is, and that's what I'm going to teach you, not just based on my experience, but also based on what we've seen winning traders do and losing traders do, and I'll show you some actual statistics from these markets and from our own data that we've gathered as well. Now, moving on. One of the advantages or disadvantages, but one of the advantages that spread trading offers people is you're able to trade quicker than ever. Now, if you look at this ticket, for instance, you can click buy or sell, but you see the chart right in front of you. And you might say, right, I want to buy now, I want to sell now, I want to buy now. There are people who will easily do 100 trades in a day. This is just the one minute chart where every single one of these bars is the price movement of the FTSE 100 daily rolling in one minute. In one minute, this is how much it's moved. People will just observe these and hit buy, sell, buy, sell quickly at just one pound a point because they don't want to risk too much as they see the trends moving. But I'm going to have to discuss how do we still know when to buy, when to sell, and how much money 
to put in. I've mentioned margin already, I've mentioned spread already. What I want you to see in here, in this chart, is to look at the fact that this ticket already tells you how much margin is required. In other words, if you want to put a one pound bet on the FTSE 100, you need 58 pounds in your account, and for every point it goes up or down, you make or lose a pound. In order to do that, you need 58 pounds in your account. So you get an idea of, okay, the financial ratios. One pound bet for the FTSE 100, and it'll vary depending on products, but you'll see on a ticket what the margin required is. You also see the spread. It's a one point spread. That means if you were to buy and immediately sell, you're going to lose a pound. That pound goes to the broker. They make a pound. That's all they make from when you trade. Even if this goes up 100 points, the spread will only ever be a pound, and that's all they make from that trade, one pound. There's no commissions, no tax, nothing else. So that's where you know what the spread is. Look at these two points, stop and limit. I'll explain what those are later on as well, because we'll need to know those as well in order to manage how we buy, how we sell, and especially if we're trading during the day. The other thing I want you to notice is the timelines. This is a one-minute chart. We can put it down to uh, tick by tick, every single individual price movement, or we can put it across to a month by month. And we might just want to trade on a month by month. We might say, you know what, I'm too busy. I'll just place a trade this month. That's all. So let's go onwards. Typical chart looks like this. You're familiar with bar charts, but just in case those people aren't, what each one of these bars represents is the low, the close price, the high the open price. The one that I'm showing here is not the high-low close, it's the candle or the Japanese candle. When it's red, it means the price opened at the top and fell. When it's green, it means it opened at the bottom and rose. Now, the body represents where the price opened and closed, and the wick, these straight lines, represent how high it went and how low it went. In a way, that doesn't matter. All you need to know is which direction it's going in and we'll talk more later about this, but the two main you need to know, candlesticks, high, open, high, low, close. Again, this will be very basic for some people. I'm going to get very advanced in a second. Time periods. What time periods do I prefer? If I'm not incredibly busy running the asset management side, then I may well be looking at one second, 10 second, 30 second charts and just trading bang, bang, bang. If I'm going to be rather busy, I need to pull out my timelines out accordingly particularly for those people with day jobs, they might be looking at day charts, one hour charts, two or four hour charts. The problem then occurs is, well, wait a minute, what if I'm in a meeting? I can't just place a trade. Arpish, you're going to tell me when to buy and when to sell, but I need the machine to close those trades and to know when to close those trades. We'll look at that as well in this so that we can place a trade even sometimes before we go to work and leave those to it. And sometimes that's the best way to trade because very often people get they overtrade. They overtrade when they're completely sat in front of the computer screen all the time. They get nervous. They oh, I want to do something. They get bored, and so they start trading uh, out of boredom. Very bad. Sometimes it's a lot better to have analyzed the trade the night before, and I'll show you how to analyze them. And then, having done that, placing the trade orders, leaving it to the computer to place the entry order and the exit, and just leaving it. Just walking away and leaving it. And that, I find, is very much a better strategy than most people adopt. So I'll show you in detail in this webinar how exactly we will do that. What then about placing a trade? Well, here you can see a typical chart. The lovely thing nowadays with most platforms is that you can hit buy and sell directly from the chart, and you can just get on with it. There's no fiddling around. And if you looked at this, you might say, oh, I think this has now started to fall, so I want to sell. And you click on sell, you say, I want to make one pound per point this falls, bang. So I'll hit sell, and as the, it drops, and you can see the figures, 1.3735, 1.3737, so it's a two-point spread. As it falls, you know how much you're going to make or lose. Again, I've not yet answered the question how do we know when to buy and when to sell? I'll do that in a second. That decision, when to buy, when to sell, actually comes down to strategies. Uh, oh, somebody's asked me which spread company is it. I will tell you in one second. I'm not being coy for uh, any particular reason, but I will tell you which spread company it is and what we've done there. Uh, and there's a reason for that because there's an iPad in it, so I'll explain in a second uh, which company. Strategies. 
this is how we determine when to buy and sell. Now, I'm going to give you four simple strategies, and they're the basic building blocks, in actual fact, of more complicated ones. In future free webinars, I'll talk, I'll build upon these and explain how to improve upon them, how to get better at knowing when to buy and sell, but this is the basic building points. In effect, four main strategies used by spread bettors are either following trends, looking for breakouts, being a contrarian, or buying for the long term, and or going short for the long term, selling for the long term. So we're going to need to know a little bit about all four of these. Uh, so let me start off with the first and most simple, is following a trend, and you'll be familiar with this. I'm sure what will happen is you will look at several screens, UK FTSE 100 I looked at, I happen to look at, and you'll see that I put one minute bar charts here, so this is a time when we might think, oh, I've got a bit of time, I'm not busy out in meetings or whatever, one minute, and you'll see I put high, low, close as the chart type, so you can see the bars falling, downtrend I see here, and I think to myself, well, it's a nice little downtrend, I think that's going to continue. Uh, so I'm just going to hit sell. I'm going to just put one pound a point in because I'm a beginner. I'm still testing the waters. I'll put one pound a point in. Of course, that doesn't answer the question, how do we know exactly when to sell? Or indeed, in this case, because it is a downtrend, we might say, well, I'm going to sell right here. How do we know when to get back out of that by buying? Now, let's say, for argument's sake, we sold when this was at 57.90, and we bought, we then hit buy, when it hit 57.84, well, then we've made, before the spread, we've made six points after the spread, which is uh, a one-point spread. We've made five points. If it was one pound a point, we made five pounds in the space of 20 minutes or whatever. No, 10 minutes. In the space of roughly 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, we made five pounds. If we bet a bigger amount, say 10 pounds a point, we made 50 pounds. If we bet even bigger, and we'll have to work out how much we do know to bet, in a second. But that raises the question, how did I know when to go short and sell? Just because there's a downward trend doesn't mean I know. This is an obvious one. How do you know when there's a downward trend? And just because I said, oh, and what if we bought here? Well, yeah, life's built on what ifs. How do I know when to get out of the trade with something like this? How do I know? all these things because yes it's all very well saying it's easy to sell easy to buy and there you go and here's five minutes and you've made 50 pounds or 500 pounds that's very easy in reality it's very difficult so how do we do these things well we develop strategies and I'm going to give you one simple trend following one but before I do let me explain why we might want to trade in the direction of the trend and it's simply this Everything to do with trading is to do with putting the odds in your favor, putting the odds of getting a return in your favor. One of the ways in which you can put the odds in your favor is to trade in the direction of a trend. Of course, we've got to be able to identify the trend, know that we've identified it, and so on. But one of the ways that we put the odds in our favor is to say, this is a downtrend. If I go short, I will be making money because the odds are in my favor that the trend will continue. That's the basic theory, that trends continue. Of course, they reverse all the time. That's why we need to know when to exit. So the basic premise is I'm putting the odds in my favor. Now I need to know, well, how do I still know that I can recognize a downtrend and recognize an uptrend and when I should get out? So we might develop a simple strategy. Here's one. It's the same chart as last time, and I've shown a very, let me explain this picture. It's still the daily FTSE 100. It's a one minute bar. That's the buy and sell ticket you can see there. It's a possible strategy, which is you enter if the price makes a three period low. It's the lowest it's been in the past three periods. In other words, in this case, it's a one minute chart in the last three minutes. It could be a 10 minute chart. Could be a one day chart, doesn't matter. The principles are the same. A three period low. So, what is a three period row? Well, remember, each one of these bars is one minute. Each one of these, every single one of these represents a minute. Entry is a three period low. Well, it's about here because that, at that point, the price is the lowest it's been for three, two, one minutes. Actually, it's the lowest it's been, if you go here, for one, two, three, four minutes, okay? Here, on bar, which I've marked number three, the lowest it goes is not the lowest it's been for the past three minutes. 
as you can see, it's only the lowest point it's been since the previous minute. The previous minute here is the lowest it's been for the past two minutes, but not the past three minutes because it had been lower here. So we roughly say three period low, which in this case is the entry point marked here. By the way, as I said, this webinar will be available on arpishpatel.com for free, so you'll be able to pause and look at this in far more detail there. Okay, that's the entry, at which point we hit sell in this case. By the way, same rules apply if it was an uptrend. We hit sell, and that's the entry point. Well, how do I know when to go out? How do I know that is indeed going to be a downward trend? Well, I put a simple rule in here. I'll exit at a three-period high. So this keeps falling. The first three-period high, the highest the price is for the past three periods is here. Because if you look at it, the price at this point where it says exit is higher than bar number three, bar number two, bar number one. It's the highest it's been for three periods. That means we entered short at roughly 57.98 or 5,800. No, 57.98, 57.99. Call it 57.98 for argument's sake. And we exited at about 57.84. Call it 57.85 to allow for the red. 57.85 minus 57.98 gives us 13 points. Well, if it's one pound a point, that's 13 pounds. If it was 10 pounds a point, it's 130 pounds. That was made over the period of about half an hour. 18 minutes past the hour to 48 minutes past the hour. So, half an hour. In order to make either 13 pounds or 130 pounds or whatever multiple thereof, depending on how many pounds per point we bet. Now, we'll obviously need to look at how do we decide how many pounds per point. I'll come to that in a second. But this is a simple strategy, which is for the person who's going to be sitting in front of the screen. Now, you might not just look at the FTSE 100. You'll want to look at something which moves a lot and is a liquid. You might say, I'll look at pound dollar. You might say, I'll look at gold or oil. In a way, it doesn't matter. One minute charts, simple strategy, trying to put the odds in our favor. You might not enter any trade until you've actually seen a downtrend in place where you say, look, I can see a downward trend. I'll only enter once that trend is clearly in place around, say, this point. Then I'll enter and I'll make a decision whether or not it is actually going to move in which direction. Now, what I will, yep, somebody's talking about ETX and spreads. I'll come on to that, all those questions in a bit. Now, downward trend, entry and exit. So I'll talk about brokers in a second and which ones have good spreads and bad spreads and which ones we can trust and so on as well. But thank you for that message. Just one second. Going forward, some people will even look at 30 second charts. They'll put it on to 10 seconds or 30 seconds, this is 10 seconds, and they'll look to try and find the trends there and see which direction it's going in. Now, I think that's pretty difficult because it just moves around so much, so wildly, you just don't know. And so what I'd say is, on the whole, I would not look at something which is around 10 seconds, well, anything under a minute, because it's just very difficult to determine those trends uh, and whether it's about to move in a particular direction. I mean, sometimes it just moves as if it's, because you're looking at such a short time frame, as if it's about to jump in one direction, all of a sudden uh, it just reverses back again. So I don't like to look at charts under one minute. Now, I mentioned trend following there. The opposing strategy is actually the breakout, where a price is moving in one direction, and this is a, a diagram where it's doing that, and all of a sudden it moves in the opposite direction. It breaks out from such a downward trend. And here I've drawn a trend line which, which joins peaks and which joins troughs. And it breaks out in one direction. And what tends to happen when it does that is it's going to continue in that new direction. So that is a breakout strategy as opposed to trend following. In a way, a breakout is saying a new trend has started and I want to follow the new trend. Nothing rocket science about it. Same principles as before that you can apply if it makes a three period high. Or you can say, well, as soon as the breakout occurs, I want to be in and I'll stay in until it makes a three period low in this case because you're going long and you're expecting it to move upwards. Simple strategies, you look at the chart and you get in on the breakouts. Nothing complicated there. Here's another example. You've got the price falling, falling. You wait for the breakout. You draw a downward trend line. You say, as soon as 
it breaks above that, I'll get in. Same, same kind of platform. All platforms tend to have a similarity. On the left-hand side, they'll have all the products. Then they'll have a list of some of the most popular ones. Then they'll have a trade button. You click on the trade button. They'll have a chart button. If you click on the trade button, you can see the buy and sell ticket. You can either hit buy or sell, obviously, and how many pounds per point you want to make. Uh, and on the chart, you'll see the chart. All very straightforward, very simple uh, with all of them, same principles. The issue, therefore, becomes the, the spread, the buy and sell spread between them. And as I say, I'll come to that with brokers in a second and how sometimes brokers will actually invisibly end up costing you money. So I'll come to that as well. This, you can read uh, what it tells you here is we've set on for £12 per point, you can buy or sell. We've hit the trade ticket, we've got a chart, and we've picked this particular instrument, and we're just waiting for a breakout. As soon as the price goes above, we'll go buy. Until then, it's a downward trend, so we'll look to sell and make that much. We'll also open up the chart for something what the more than just the two hour chart which is the one I'm showing you there uh, we might want to look at a longer time frame to see overall where the trend is and which direction it's going so that's the breakout and trend following which can complement each other and can keep you very busy because as soon as one trend ends a breakout starts and a new trend begins as soon as that ends you go in the opposite direction ideally you keep on calling it right you zigzag the markets in and out you look at the time frame you're comfortable with one minute two minutes, whatever, but you also look at the longer term time frame to see where the broader trend is, which might be the one hour or in this case, uh, you know, a multiple of whatever time frame you're looking at. But what then of the third strategy, which in a way complements the trend following and the contrarian, uh, and this one I'm going to show you is one which you only want to use with foreign exchange, and this shows you the actual profit and loss of every single trade of an actual client account we took. We've taken a particular period, 1st to 17th of July, and the reason for that, because uh, it was an unusually successful period. And you might say, well, that's all very well picking an unusually successful period, but I wanted to show you an extreme example. Obviously, in reality, across a longer period, a more mixed set of results, but this is what actually happened with one client. 454 trades, and I'll show you what the strategy is in a second. 450 winning trades in just two weeks. So it goes just to show you how frequent traders can be. Average return was £14.79. Maximum return was £500. Minimum was minus £35. Total overnight funding charges. Because remember, it's a margin product. You're borrowing money from the broker. Uh, that was £406. So that gives you some idea also of how quickly those costs can uh, uh, rise up, but a heck of a lot of money made because what you can see on the horizontal x-axis for every single one of those trades is how much money was made. And by the way, the reason you can see these pink lines here, which are losses or costs, is because it also includes the funding charges. So although there were only four losing trades, there were funding charges every night. So we want to pick brokers with relatively low funding charges because they're a cost to our trading. And a funding charge, I said, it's the overnight borrowing cost of having a position open because, as mentioned, it's a margin product. That means we've put down, it's a, it's a bit like when you buy a house. You put down a deposit, but the rest the bank lends you, and for that you pay interest. It's exactly the same principle. So what was the strategy which generated these kinds of returns? Well, this particular trader only did it with foreign exchange on the basis that foreign exchange, on the whole, tends to move for various periods of time around a particular price. It doesn't tend to just keep on going up and up and up like Apple shares. It tends to move around particular values, and then it'll move to new set of values and rotate around those. It goes up and down around a set of values. So here he took pound sterling and said, right, it's moving around this particular, this particular price. So if it moves too far from it, I'll expect it to go back up. Or if it moves too far ahead, above, I'll expect it to come back down. Simple strategy. That's all he did. And that, the, that was the result. So how does it look? Well, if it moves too far, and indeed it did, it got as far as point A, at which point he said, well, I'm gonna, I think it's going to move back. Actually, it kept on going as low as point B. And then it started moving upwards again. So he made his return, and it did indeed mean revert, which means it went back to the, the point. Now, like 
trend following, like breakouts, none of these work 100% of the time. The point is, putting your odds in your favor means being right more than 50% of the time. Because 50% is a coin toss. 50% means, oh, just toss a coin at any given point. If it comes up heads, go long. If it comes up tails, go short. Well, we can't do that. But also, even with this and with the trend following, we'll still have to see, how do I know when I should exit? I shouldn't just say, oh, it'll go back, it'll go back, and just wait forever. Otherwise, my cash will be tied up. And what if it never goes back? I'd be sitting on a huge loss. So I'll have to explain how we know not just when to enter and when to exit, because that's part of this, but how much money to put in and when to enter, when to exit. So I will come to that, because that's the difficult bit. Any idiot can tell you, oh, just go long, go short, and hope for the best. Hold on until it comes back. That's really bad, pathetic trading. What we actually need to know is, when do I know when to buy and sell? Well, here, we've got a simple rule. Once we've got a mean line or an, a line around which the trade seems to be rotating, that's when we, and it moves far away from it as we've seen in the recent past. So in this case, point A, because it had gone as far as that before, then we expect it to be back. But how do we know when to stop? Because what if it had kept on going? I'll come to that in a second. There are five things I like and want from a broker. Now, as somebody pointed out, that was ETX. Uh, if you go to alpishpatel.com forward slash ETX, you'll be able to, to see that. We don't just use ETX. We've gone through a lot of brokers, and at the moment, we do diligence vetted and approved two ETX and capital spreads, uh, and that's on a mixture of... Now, somebody said, well, they don't like the spreads on ETX. That's fine. Have a look at capital spreads as well. Open both accounts. That way, you can compare spreads and market service platforms and so on, and that's on alpishpatel.com forward slash capital spreads. Now... What you can see here, and the five things that I want from all brokers, and I'll come to stops and limits, how do we know when to get out, when to exit in a second, because those are the most difficult bits. That's, that's the bit that, that you know, is, is where the money's made and lost. How are we going to get on to that? Well, there's several things I want from a broker. First of all, I want email alerts. I want to be able to click on something and know that if something's hit my target, I get a, a message wherever I am. I might be in a meeting. I might be wherever. The reason I mention this is when I started trading, I was either at school or I was at university or I was as a barrister. And I'd have to keep on calling up the stockbroker to get the prices. We don't need to do that now. So I want email alerts so that I know where I am. The other five things, of the five things I want, I want an iPhone app. And a lot of brokers offer this so I can monitor wherever I am because I will want to place orders. I will want to do that on the move. I don't want to just be away because that's costing me money. What I should say is anybody opening accounts on alpishpatel.com forward slash ETX, 500 trades, and you saw that some do it in two weeks, we'll send you an iPad so you can actually do all of this. Please trade responsibly, though. You shouldn't just be trading to get an iPad. You should be trading because it makes money. Uh, and You start small. You do with practice accounts if you're a beginner. Uh, but I just thought I'd say that. I'll come back to that in a second anyway. What else do I want? I want to be able to monitor multiple charts. You can see here, I can see the one minute chart, I can see the five minute chart. That allows me to trade on one minute and say, right, this is an upward trend, and on five minutes to say, okay, this trend seems to be going in that same direction. Or I might place differing orders, and I don't need to be trading in the same instrument. It might be one minute on the FTSE 100 and one minute on gold or 4x, because I don't just want to have one position open. That would be inefficient use of capital. I don't just want to have FTSE 100. But the key ones that I'll look at are FTSE 100, the Dow, sterling dollar. I will look at uh, individual stocks, but for longer term. Uh, and I will also sometimes monitor other currencies as well. Those will tend to be my most favorite. So in other words, I'm looking only at about five securities at any one time because I can't equally look at too many. Five securities at a time, and I want to be looking at the one-minute charts. If I'm fully in front of the computer, if I'm not, then longer term. Now, I've left a couple of questions still open. I've still said, well, wait a minute. If I've got a day job, how can I be looking at one-minute charts? How do I place the orders? How do I then know when to exit automatically? Well, I'll go through that. One of the things, or one of the five things I like and want is I want trailing stops. What's a trailing stop? That means whenever I've bought or sold something, it will automatically exit me out if the price falls a certain amount. So in this case, I hit stop, and it trails the price. 
if it drops six points in this case, it'll automatically exit me out. Uh, and that's what I want. I want it to be trailing behind my trading, I might behind my price and exit according to whether I've gone long or short so that my losses are not too great because as we all know, I could place a trade, go off for an hour, come back, oh my God, I've just got a massive loss as a result. So trailing stops are something that I want. Now, the trick still, the problem still arises, wait a minute, Alpish, how do we know how far that trailing stop should be? A lot of people will say, oh, sometimes I put it really close so I don't lose too much and I get whipsawed out, it hits it and then goes off again. Other people will say, I put it so far out, I ended up losing a, a, my shirt. Thirdly, people say, well, wait a minute, doesn't the broker monitor that and then hit that trade, take my trade away from me, so I suffer a loss and then trade away. I'll address these issues as we go on in the webinar because they're very important issues. The other thing I want are what's called if done orders. Now, this is what I'm talking about when I say that I might be too busy at the day job, so I need to, first of all, place a trade in the morning and just leave it and go away. That's what an if done order is. We're looking here at the UK FTSE 100, and we're looking at buy and sell. You decide you want to buy the FTSE 100 daily rolling contract if the price reaches 55.60. Now, at the moment, it's at 55.33. You say, if it goes to 55.60, I think it's going to go higher, so I want to buy. And if that order is executed, you want to take your profit if it then goes on to 5,600 from 55.60. That's called the limit order. So you click on limit. You can see here. 40 points, level 5,600. So if it goes up 40 points from your entry, you've said, I want to buy at level 5,560. I want to limit, and I take profit at 40 points higher, which is 5,600. Or if the market falls, you wish to be stopped, that's your stop order at 5,530. Now, what's interesting here is note, if it goes up and your order is executed at 5,560, You'll make 40 points if it hits your profit, but you'll lose 30. That's your risk. If it doesn't, in other words, your reward is greater than your risk. You putting the odds in your favor because you've said if it already goes up to 55.60, then I'm thinking there's a trend. You might look at the chart and said, ah, this is a breakout if it does that. And what you've said is if it breaks out, I think it'll therefore continue in the new trend and I've got a reward of 40 and a loss of 30. You can imagine on five different products making five of these types of positions. Always make sure the reward is greater than the risk and that the odds are in your favor by it being either a breakout or a continuation of a trend. Then you just leave it. It will automatically take care of itself. You go to work, whatever else it is, bang, it's done. Doesn't need to be minute by minute trade or whatever. It can be whatever time frame you're looking at, but this is what you're saying. Uh, I want my reward to be greater than my risk, and if it goes to a certain level, I want to buy. Of course, you can do the reverse, which is sell uh, first instead, uh, and I want to risk this much and reward this. The most important thing is my reward is greater than my risk. Therefore, if I do 100 of these trades, I should make money, shouldn't I? Because I'm only going to lose. Let's say I do 100 of these trades, and on 50 of them, 50% I lose, 50% I make money, so I'm no better than a coin toss. Well, for the ones I've lost, I'll have lost 30 points. For the ones I made, I'll have made 40 points. So net, net, I'll have made 10 points per every trade on average across those that whole 100 trades. I'll have lost 30 times 50, and I will have made 40 times 50. 50. In other words, I'll have made 2,000 and lost 1,500, so I'll have made 500 overall. That could be 500 pounds over those 100 trades. However, I've got to tell you, that only works, the odds are in your favor. In other words, you're trading in the direction of momentum, either because it's the trend or it's a breakout or it's the contrarian strategy I showed earlier. But mathematically, it should then work in your favor. So, what about other questions people will ask? And we're going to get to a lot of questions that I've raised. What are commissions? Well, I said there's no commissions. What is a spread? I've discovered, uh, disclosed that. What markets do you offer? I've mentioned that. Daily cash markets calculated. Uh, how are you able to price Wall Street daily cash when the Dow Jones Index is closed and so on? This, these kinds of questions you can see in great detail. What's the difference between daily cash and daily rolling contracts on the website? So just go to alpastral.com forward slash ETX. That's where you can open and uh, also forward slash capital spreads as well. The two sites that I look at, in particular Bloomberg.com, CNBC.com I wanted to mention, and on an iPhone, iPad, uh, uh, look at that. 
So before I go on to answer all these other questions, like how do I know when to sell? How do I know when to buy? We've still got to answer that in a bit more detail. I uh, just mentioned you can register for free on rpgpatel.com for those who haven't. Lots of free webinars and videos on there. Everything's free on there. Uh, it's not just FX, though. It's stocks, equity, spread betting as well. And all my upcoming webinars are on there as well. They're always all free. And lots of other videos as well. Uh, all free on there. Nothing to sell on there and future webinars such as this in FX, who makes money, who doesn't. But what I wanted to mention, and you can see some of the titles which will be coming up on there if you register on ampashpatel.com for those who haven't, you'll be told of which ones are coming up, is I wanted to mention this. Uh, email me once you've opened an account, placed your first trade, do 500, and like I said, 500 trades equals an iPad, but please trade responsibly. Uh, as I said, I'm going to come on to when buy, sell, and also the, the five or six lessons from winners and losers in just one second. You can either open if you want to do FX and not spread betting there, or spread trading is here. Please reread the risk assessment. When you've opened an account, place to trade, we'll add you onto my monthly trading newsletter. Uh, my market views into your inbox we'll take care of. Sign copy of my book, Mind of a Trader, CD on what winning traders do right, research I use from Goldman's and so on will go into your inbox as well as and when I find interesting research from there, free access to seminars, webinars, uh, and so on and so forth. So what about brokers? Somebody said wider spreads. Yes, open more than one, open both. Compare them. See which one service you like. See which platforms you like. What about the notion that brokers move the price against you? This is the case that we've discovered against some brokers. We've also discovered that some smaller brokers, but we're not so sure about their survivability. I'm not going to mention names because it's only rumors, and so I don't know for sure, and that's why we've due diligence quite a few, and we're only sticking with these because we've had a bad experience personally with obviously world spreads and with MF Global, can you believe it? Can't trust anybody. So we're being very cautious with who we do due diligence recommend at the moment and work with and partner. Go through those links, open those, and we'll make sure we take care of all of this. Uh, and the place to email is alpesh.patel at tradermind.com or the email that you got from us.